Thanks, Winnipeg. Minister Isyang Parad is here with me in our Ottawa studio. Hello and welcome. Hi, all. So for those who may not necessarily know a lot about this topic, can you tell me a little bit about the indigenous peoples living in Taiwan? Currently, we have 16 indigenous peoples in Taiwan, and that takes up uh, that up to 580,000 people in population, taking up about 2.4 percent of our total population. Okay, and can you give me a little bit of a better sense of the uh, social and economic conditions uh, in which indigenous people live in Taiwan? I think the situation of indigenous peoples in Taiwan is similar to indigenous peoples around the world. In the early days, when we think about income, the income of indigenous peoples is roughly about 60 percent of the general income of the population, and it had a very high unemployment rate. I think about 15 years ago it went as high as 8 percent. But in recent years, we have seen some improvements. Well, it is uh, remarkable to hear about the similarities because it is a similar situation here in Canada. There is a large uh, gap, not just in the quality of life uh, between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people. There's also a large gap in infrastructure. Uh, indigenous people lack uh, clean water in some cases, and they lack infrastructure such as housing. Uh, to what extent is the situation similar or different in Taiwan? Uh, so I think we are good in terms of water supply in Taiwan, but the problem is Taiwan is a very small uh, island with small um, lands. So since the Industrial Revolution, about 40, um, for the past 40 years, we have seen a large amount of relocation towards the urban areas for indigenous peoples. Of the 550,000 people that I mentioned earlier on, over half of them have their household registrations changed to the urban areas for employment and for schooling. Again, it's a very similar situation here. Um, but here in Canada, the government has a colonial relationship with Indigenous people going back a, a long time. It has led to tension and sometimes outright conflict, both in the past and in the present. Uh, so what has the relationship been like historically and presently between governments in Taiwan and indigenous people? So for the past 400 years, indigenous peoples in Taiwan have faced the, a lot of foreign forces. First of all, it's the Dutch people that came to Taiwan, and then it was the during the Ming Dynasty and the Qing Dynasty, the people from China, and then it was the Japanese ruling, and post-war, it's the Republic of China government coming to Taiwan. All of these foreign regimes ruling over the indigenous peoples in Taiwan, it has caused great impact, including the loss in our lands and our languages. Mm. Uh, Canada still has uh, something known as the Indian Act. Uh, this is a federal law that racially discriminates against uh, Indigenous people and it governs many aspects of Indigenous people's lives. It's a very old law, but it remains on the books. So I'm curious to hear about how that compares to the legal situation governing Indigenous peoples in your country. Yes, we understand that in Canada there was the Indian Act. The difference between Taiwan and Canada was that for the past many years, these foreign regimes have always tried to in make or mainstream our indigenous peoples, include them and assimilate them in our society. However, that has seen a, we have seen a change in the past 20 years where we amended our constitution to recognize the basic rights of indigenous peoples in our constitution. And then we further went on to trying to solve our employment issues and schooling issues and language loss issues. So we came up with separate regulations guaranteeing the employment of indigenous peoples and the Education Act for Indigenous Peoples. And also five years ago, we adopted the 
Indigenous Languages Development Act. All of these, and also recently, we are coming up with an regulations to protect the traditional wisdoms and creations of Indigenous peoples. With the modern political system, we are giving the rights back to Indigenous peoples and giving the voice to Indigenous peoples in Taiwan. Well, it is always remarkable to hear just how similar things have been uh, all over the world for Indigenous peoples. However, unfortunately, we are out of time for the segment, so I would like to thank you for coming here and answering my questions. Thank you. Arai. It's Yang Parad is the Minister for the Council of Indigenous Peoples in Taiwan. Back to you in Winnipeg.